The Defense Department and General Services Administration will require businesses of all sizes, even small businesses, to comply with the Pentagon's Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification Program soon. The Pentagon says small businesses are particularly vulnerable to cyber attacks from all over. Kirsten Todd is Managing Director of the Cyber Readiness Institute. She's former Executive Director of the Commission on Enhancing National Cybersecurity under President Obama. She's writing about small business cyber problems in the Hill newspaper. Kirsten, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. What are the biggest cyber threats that small and medium businesses are up against, especially those that try to do business with the federal government? Well, thanks so much. It's great to be with you. Uh, the answer really is all of the cyber threats um, because small businesses are typically under-resourced. Uh, they don't have the capabilities, the extension to be aware of what the threats are and more importantly, uh, how to combat them. And even when they do, again, they're financially constrained. And so we have to be looking differently at how to help these small businesses, which are critical components of our global supply chains. And that's really the big issue. We live in such an interdependent world right now. We saw it with solar winds and we've seen it across uh, the Microsoft Exchange breach. Small businesses, when they're impacted, it impacts the larger global economy. Um, you point out, I think, well in this piece that what a small business really means. And you quote the CEO of Bank of America, Brian Moynihan, um, 80% of America's businesses have fewer than 10 employees, 95% have fewer than 100. So these businesses really are small in the context of America and not small in the context of, say, the industrial base that serves the federal government. You write about five steps that the government can take today that will have an impact on helping these businesses. And the first one you write about is creating a small and medium-sized business cybersecurity center uh, to live at CISA. What would that look like and what would that do? So this is really building off of the fantastic work that CISA has done with small businesses and being able to identify the resources that small businesses need, uh, but really looking at having a repository of information for small businesses. Uh, at the Cyber Readiness Institute, we focus on human behavior, but there are a lot of other nonprofit efforts that are working to help small businesses. And so being able to identify one place in government where small businesses can go when there's a big threat to know what they should be doing but importantly, what are the day-to-day -day, uh, issues thing and things that they need to be working on? Uh, and I think with the plus up in the budget uh, that uh, makes CISA an almost $1 billion agency, it makes sense to put these resources there. Uh, certainly they would connect to the resources at the Small Business Administration and other uh, entities within government. But having that one-stop shop at the agency that is really looking at cybersecurity across critical infrastructure is so important. Uh, and we've seen some great work recently this year uh, on the part of CISA, specifically with ransomware, which is uh, the greatest threat to small businesses right now, as it is uh, really to every business, as we just saw with the Colonial Pipeline uh, event. The second item on your list is establishing cybersecurity incentives in the form of tax credits. I wish we had time to talk about all five of these. I don't. The third is setting cybersecurity standards. The fourth is launching national cyber squads. What would those squads do, Kirsten? So what we're looking at here is how do we help cultivate a workforce uh, that starts really in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. And so we're taking graduates out of college that have knowledge in cybersecurity and that can then go intern with small businesses. And by having this type of effort, and we've seen other formats that are very similar, uh, being able to then uh, fund this internship program through the government, but it both facilitates a workforce. Uh, it helps us to help uh, students understand that they have the capabilities and the aptitudes to work in cyber. It's not just about science and math. Uh, the importance of this interdisciplinary issue looks at his history, psychology, politics, et cetera. But then being able to then go into small businesses and help them with their cyber resources, because a lot of these small businesses don't have the financial wherewithal to hire a chief information security officer and IT manager. The last item on your list, Kirsten, is rolling out a national cyber readiness education campaign what do we tell small business owners about the dangers, the risks of cybersecurity if they haven't already heard about solar winds and Colonial Pipeline and Microsoft Exchange? What, what do we say now to get them to do something different? 
Well, what we're looking at with this campaign is there's so many issues when it comes to cybersecurity, but what we know is one of the biggest issues is strong authentication. In other words, a password that can't get breached. So if we take an approach almost like a schoolhouse rock, if we go back to the 70s uh, approach to learning about uh, Congress and how the government works, but if we take an approach like that to just making the point about the importance and the significance of a strong password, we think will go a long way. Because if you look at all of the breaches that have happened, not just in recent memory, but really over the last decade, most of them, if not all, start with a compromised authentication. We saw it with SolarWinds, SolarWinds 123. We saw it with uh, the Equifax breach where the password was password. Uh, so it's really educating small businesses as well as all businesses on the importance of that of a strong password and the important piece there is that everybody can take play a role in making your business more resilient i'm only smiling because you reminded me that the password was password and i'm thinking it's 2021 people i mean come on um, we have about a minute left what would you watch as as the response that the government makes to these kinds of challenges for small and medium-sized businesses moves forward kirsten well, I think we saw a tremendous effort on the part of the Biden administration last week with the release of the executive order. And we know that small businesses are absolutely on their radar screen. And so we just have to pay close attention to making sure that small businesses are very much a part of the conversation, but importantly, that they have access to the resources that help them become more cyber aware and more cyber ready. Kirsten, thanks very much for joining me. I appreciate Thank your you. time very much. Thanks so much. Great to be with you.